today we're cooking state bird with provisions. This is a pretty important dish to the restaurant because it's its namesake, number one. Number two, this was a dish that is close to the head chef Stuart Brioza's heart. It was developed way before the restaurant was even conceived, and he said that he would actually never take it off the menu because he loves cooking it so much. First thing you're going to need is six four to five ounce quail. I was only able to find five, so that's the amount that I'll be working with today. The quail also needs to be semi-boneless. What does that even mean, semi-boneless? So what I think it means is that you need to separate out the backbone and also remove the breastbone. I suppose you could remove more, but it would be too difficult for a home cook. You can use a sharp kitchen knife for this or use sharp scissors like what I'm doing. It's just easier for me. Find where the backbone is and cut around it. Be honest with yourself at this point. If you are uncomfortable with the sound of bone crunching or you just don't want to debone a bird, just let your butcher do it. You should be able to remove it pretty easily. If you see a piece of neck hanging off or extra skin, just pull it off. The breastbone is pretty easy to find. Just split the quill in half and you should see a bone sticking out. You don't need a knife to remove this. You can just pull it out, but you can use a knife if you want to. Once the bone is removed, you can cut the quail in half. And do the same for the rest of the quail. Once that's done, it is time to marinate. Take a large container and add one cup of well-shaken buttermilk. Finally grate one small garlic clove on a microplane. Chefy recipes tend to really love microplanes. You're gonna use it again to grate about a quarter teaspoon of lemon zest. Add a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper and one eighth a teaspoon of kosher salt. Once you're done mixing everything together, add the quail and gently toss to coat. The recipe says to marinate 12 to 36 hours, so I'm gonna go in between marinate for 24 hours. Stick it in the refrigerator once you're done coating everything. All right, once 24 hours have passed, we can work on the breading for the quail. First thing you'll need is one cup of toasted pumpkin seeds. Next is one cup coarse dried breadcrumbs. It didn't state specifically whether to use panko or a different type, so I'm using panko breadcrumbs. If the kitchen looks a little different today, I'm actually at my parents and I'm using their gigantic kitchen. Combine the pumpkin seeds and breadcrumbs in a food processor and pulse until the pumpkin seeds are approximately a quarter inch pieces. I know this is oddly specific, but it says that in the cookbook. I think the pieces are left a little larger so you can see the pumpkin. It's more of a, a textural visual thing, I suppose. If anybody knows why they do this, please let me know. This looks about a quarter inch, maybe? It's good enough. Add the mixture to a pretty big bowl. Next is one cup of all-purpose flour. In hindsight, I should have sifted it because I had some lumps, so I'll make sure to sift it. Also sift one cup of potato starch. Why is potato starch needed? Uh, potato starch, from what I've read, is supposed to hold the crispiness a little bit longer. I'm not sure if that's the reason why they used it, but that's what I'm assuming. Here come the seasonings. Add three tablespoons of sweet paprika, three tablespoons dark chili powder, two teaspoons garlic powder, one tablespoon kosher salt, one teaspoon cayenne pepper. This bowl is obviously a little too small for me to bread the quail, so I'm transferring it to a larger container. Remove each quail piece from the marinade and add it to the breading mixture. Make sure each piece has a generous coating, but also a pretty even one. And you wanna make sure the coating gets into all the little cracks and crevices. Once you're done coating it, place onto a baking sheet. I line mine with parchment paper, but you don't have to do that. Finish off the rest of the quail and place into the refrigerator uncovered for four hours. 
I don't really like wasting food. There's a lot of the breading left over. I just coated some chicken tenders with this and fried it up for dinner. Now we can move on to the onions. You will need four of the Dahlia onions. For some reason, I could only find three, so I'm replacing the last one with a sweet onion. Cut the onions into quarter inch half moons. One strip Meyer lemon peel. Make sure you don't get the pith. You'll also need one rosemary sprig. This is just from my garden. The cookbook says to wrap the rosemary and lemon peel in cheesecloth. I don't have cheesecloth, but I do have this kind of polyester tea bag for loose tea leaves. Uh, this should work just fine. All right, last ingredient for the onions. You'll need one and a half cup plus two tablespoons of lemon juice. This is the magic that makes the onions delicious because onions and butter can be quite rich but having this lemon juice in it brightens everything up and makes it very balanced. You are going to cook the onions in 13 tablespoons of unsalted butter. This is roughly about two sticks, but try to measure out the 13 tablespoons or you will have way too much butter. And just let the butter melt. Make sure it just melts and it doesn't brown. Once the butter is melted, add the sachet, and also the onions. You wanna cook this for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the onions are wilted, but it doesn't take on any color. Once the onions are wilted, add one and a half teaspoons of granulated sugar. All right, the next part of the recipe says to add two tablespoons of kosher salt, which seems like a lot of salt to me. Something you'll have to remember is that restaurant recipes tend to have a lot more salt than a home cook would. Uh, we'll have to see afterwards when everything is done if it might end up being too salty. Now turn the heat to medium low and cook for 10 to 15 minutes until the onions are soft. The onions are now looking pretty soft. At this point, add the one and a half cup plus two tablespoons of lemon juice. Continue to cook this until the onions have pretty much disintegrated, like almost melted. This is going to take about 25 minutes. Turn this down to low or low to medium heat because you don't want this to brown either. All right, we're in the home stretch. It's time to fry the quail. Pour three inches of rice bran or canola oil into a pot for deep frying. I use canola oil because it's cheaper than rice bran. Uh, it's said to bring it to 335 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't have a way of checking it. I usually check the oil temperature by looking for smoke and dropping a piece in to see if it's frying. And as you can see, it is frying, so the oil is ready. Fry the quail in batches so you don't drop the temperature of the oil too quickly. And you want to avoid crowding as well. Turn the quail occasionally and just cook until they are brown and crispy. The recipe took says three to four minutes, but for me it took closer to about five to six minutes. I don't know if you guys have watched my previous videos, but if you know, I'm terrified of getting splattered with oil. This is a giant chopstick that my parents have in their home, and it's great for turning things without getting splattered. Once the quail is cooked through, and it's looking nice and brown and delicious, place it onto a wire rack so the oil can drip off of it. Sprinkle with salt immediately after removal from the hot oil. This part isn't in the cookbook. It's more of a cooking common sense thing for me. I like to scoop out all the debris at the bottom. You won't be able to get 100% of it out, or even 50%. This is to make sure that the bits don't burn and stick to the quail, and having all this gunk at the bottom can lower the oil temperature too. I would highly recommend doing this in between each batch. We're getting closer to eating now, just have to finish off the dish. If you want to make it fancy, you can put it on a board, just like the picture that's in the cookbook. I'm putting the onions down first, scattering the quail, and then sprinkling with shaved parmesan and dill. I'm not a huge fan of this method if there's a lot of sauce that you need to scoop up. The onion mixture balances out everything. It adds brightness and acidity. And it's very difficult to dip the pieces of quail and cheese into the onion mixture if it's on a flat board. If you've been to the restaurant, this dish is actually served in a bowl, which makes a lot more sense for dipping the meat into the sauce. 
I'm very generous with the onion mixture, mainly because I love it so much. If I could choose between this onion mixture and the quail, I would choose the onions. I would scatter the quail on top of the onions and then scatter the shaved Parmesan and chives. Serve immediately. This is rich and nutty and the cheese adds a textural and salty element. The onions brighten everything up. It's just a perfect complex dish. If you decide to make the recipe, please let me know how it goes and anything that you learned along the way too. Thank you for watching.